This is a quote from Mary Armour in 1990. I was so excited and nervous and carrying so much that I got stuck in Rennie McIntosh's swinging door. My advice to any young woman walking through the door today, it won't be easy. The life of an artist is never easy. Things have changed some though, and there are now more and more opportunities for women in art and design. Glasgow School of Art was established in 1845. The first female tutor, Elizabeth Patrick, was appointed in 1855. ECA had female tutors from the start. It was established as an amalgamation of different art schools in 1908. With Glasgow, Fran Newbury was appointed in 1885 and he did a lot to include female tutors and students um, as part of the general curriculum. I think he was a really progressive individual because he tried to elevate the art school from being a somewhat provincial place to actually being a leading institution and he saw women as being at the centre of that. He uh, also wanted to employ practising artists yeah. rather than people who had a certificate in education. Yeah. Did you have any female tutors? Yeah, undergraduate, there weren't very many. Um, yeah. Phila de Barlow, uh, Sharon Morris, Susan Hillier, but never taught me directly because I was in the painting department. Female tutors tended to be in media departments. Sculpture and painting was still the preserve of men who hit things with hammers and paintbrushes as extensions of parts of their bodies. My experience was that female tutors could be more receptive to different forms of dialogue or avenues of conversation that male tutors could sometimes be more dismissive of. Mm -hmm. That can play a huge part in women having the confidence to articulate their views and their experiences and their ideas and the ways in which that can manifest in their art practice. To be sweepingly stereotypical, there's often, see, often a tendency with a lot of male tutors to be quite dismissive. Is it the idea that it's a sort of reflexive, collaborative process then? I think it should be. I think we're all involved in the process at different levels, with different levels of experience. Why did you get into teaching? Well, I got into teaching to support my practice because I couldn't make a living out of selling my work only. The um, rewarding part of teaching is the exchange that goes on, yeah. which can be quite provocative on both sides. Yeah. You know, you both learn, basically. Yeah. Probably teaching a hundred years ago was much more about that master-student idea where you were passing on your knowledge and experience to the student. Masculine modes of teaching, isn't it? <laughs> the master, you know. Yes. Which wasn't my experience of the good, positive female tutors I had. They didn't behave in that way. So that was quite radically different, I think, in terms of the sensibility that they had. They never sort of presupposed that they had all the answers. Do you think that there is aspects of that legacy that still occur today? Yeah, that's not gone away. It's not gender specific. You yeah. can get female tutors like that as well. I think it's much less hierarchical than it used to be. Yeah, there's um, been a real breakdown of that kind of model of authority, yeah. Yeah. Looking back to the history of the exhibition, I also find that interesting in relation to the fact that you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it only really was middle class women that had access to art schools at that time. There's other arguments that can also be encompassed in terms of other demographics, I suppose. And I think that can be more problematic. Different class backgrounds, uh, queer representation, mm -hmm. different ethnic backgrounds, uh, which aren't particularly represented in Scottish art schools at this time. So why do you think we don't know much about the history of women art tutors in Scotland? Well, I think one of the things that is highlighted by the show is that these women have been hidden. Obviously, they've gone through the art school system, but then they've somehow disappeared. One of the interesting things about Nora Nielsen Gray was that she went out to the First World War and uh, recorded some of the things that she saw. And yet we don't know her paintings in the way that we might know other artists like Nash, for instance. So that's potentially more, less perhaps a responsibility of art historians, perhaps curators in some of the major kind of institutions. That's right, yes. And I think actually a much broader cultural issue about attitudes, they are underrepresented overall. What would be a kind of partial solution in the context of the kind of recent history of Scottish art? Rewriting of the histories? By women. 
If the story is and has been largely written by men, yeah, perhaps women have been left out of that for one reason or another.